nothing my God cannot do for you. And the first song that you sang, do you remember that song? Mm -hmm. what is it? God can do anything. Uh, God, can, God do can do anything. And uh, you would know that uh, I had been given a story for you today that is part of what you say. In other words, you, you kind of know it. What I'm telling you today is something you know already. You know it in song, so you're gonna remember it because you remember the song. There is nothing God cannot do. Uh, now, it is very difficult to tell stories to little kids. Do you know why? It isn't because I can't come down to little kids. No, that's not it. But it's because you're so precious, I have to be very, very careful what I say to you. I have to be very careful what I say to you. And the reason I have to be very careful because you will remember it forever and ever and ever. So if I say something to you that's wrong, that's not right, I can lead you the wrong way. And I have to be careful of that. 
and God will punish me for that. I have to be careful. Now, I say that because I remember when I was your age, I was maybe seven or eight. Well, my mom had me in uh, a Catholic school, and I still remember what the nuns taught me. I still remember parts of the catechism. I still remember that, even though I didn't read that uh, many years over what must be 70 years ago, no, more than that, more than 70 years that, I ever, that I've looked into a catechism. But I can still see those pictures and the things that they were telling me in that catechism. I can still see it. A lot of the things that the nun was teaching me as a child, I still remember. So I have to be very careful. And that's what makes it so difficult for me to tell you stories. Because I have to make sure that the stories are correct. And there is another story, too, that of my life when I was a kid because this is where I grew up as a child. I grew up in the projects. Uh, you may not know. The projects, who knows what the projects, what, what, what kind of life do you have in the projects? Yeah, it's a rough life. It's, you don't have you know, a house and uh, things like that. And I think many of you uh, live in trailers and houses, but I didn't even live in a trailer. We lived in uh, government housing because we didn't have anything. Um, but the one thing that I did have, my grandmother used to make sure that I went to church every Sunday. And my mother backed that up because if we didn't go to church, we didn't go outside to play on Sunday. On Sunday, we stayed in, the, in that apartment, that little tiny apartment, and we didn't like that. We didn't get candy for going to church. We got to play for going to church. In other words, we can go outside and play. And so I know for just about a fact, every single day of my life growing up, I was in church. Every day, whether I wanted to be or I didn't want to be, I was in church. And the church that I went to is Symington Street. There's a big white church on Symington Street and eventually I became uh, assistant superintendent. I used to teach Sunday school. But there was one thing that I asked my pastor. I said, I don't understand what you're talking about. Uh, you know, when he would get up like I am right now, I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And yet I was teaching Sunday school. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I was teaching Sunday school and I didn't know what the pastor was preaching about. So I went to him one day and I said, uh, I, I can't remember his name, but I definitely remember the nun's name to Sister Teresa. I remember that one. I was much younger then. But I asked him, I said, how come I don't understand what you're saying? How, how do I understand that? And so what he did was, he didn't tell me, he didn't tell me anything. So I said, well, I guess maybe when I get older, I'll understand. That's not true either. He should have told me, but he didn't. But anyway, I'm gonna tell you a story of a little girl and a mother and a dog. So when she read the scripture, she couldn't understand it, right? She didn't understand what what, what, what kind of scripture is this? Well, you know, Pastor Ash, she comes off the wall with screwed up stuff, right? 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 Isn't that right? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to read to you what she read. Uh, and that's in Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. And she read, Then Jesus went thence, then Jesus went, and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. What is that saying? 
nothing. Well, another way to say that, then Jesus went to Key West. Amen. Now that makes sense to you, right? Mm -hmm. But Tyre and Sidon, that makes no sense to you. Well, those were two cities back then, old cities. And those cities are still there, but they have different names today. Now, I'm going to read the rest of that. Because this is where the story is. So now, the scripture is in Mark chapter 7, verse 24. All right? This is where the story is. Remember that. And from thence, from thence he arose. In other words, from there he got up. And he started walking. From thence he arose. You don't know what that means. Well, he got up and he started walking someplace. Well, where did he go? Well, it says here, he went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. We would say, ah, you know, the borders? Cow Key Bridge. That's the border of Key West. So if you say Cow Key Bridge, then you have, an under, you, know, you, you have an idea of what he's talking about, the area where he's going to the border line, all right? Or the Mexican border, or the Canadian border. So he went into this Tyre and Sidon, the borders of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered into a house and would have no man know it but he could not hide himself. In other words, it was like Jesus went to go rest. He was tired. He was tired of teaching people, tired of walking. And he was walking. He didn't have a chariot like the Egyptian had or the Greeks had. He walked. The people walked in those days. So he wore these thick leather sandals and uh, his feet were dusty and dirty. And that's why when they went into those houses, what did the, the, the host do, the person that owned the house? What, what was one of the little things that the people in the house did for, for Jesus? What do you think they did for him? What was one of the things they did? when he went in with his dusty, dirty feet. They washed his feet. Amen. Yeah, that's what they did. So somebody got down on her knees or his knees and he said, let me wash your feet. And remember the story where Jesus said, Peter, I'm going to wash your feet. And Peter said, wash my feet. You're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, well, if I don't wash your feet, then I'm not going to have any part. Now, remember my stories. They're not quite exactly the way they are. I mean, you can interpret it your own way, but he said, you're going to wash my feet? Oh, no, you're going to have any part with me. And Jesus said, is that so? I'm not going to be part of you? I'm not going to be able to walk with you? He said, oh, in that case, wash me all over. <laughs> and Jesus said, oh, no, no, Peter, we don't have to do that. You're, only your feet are dirty. <laughs> that's all I'm going to wash, your feet. And so that's how that little story went. Huh? You want to take off your shoes so that I can wash your feet? You don't know. <laughs> because your feet are clean. Because you have, you have on socks, but your feet are clean. You have socks, your feet are clean, right? Amen. So I don't have to wash your feet. And her feet, I can see, she doesn't have on stockings, but she, her feet are clean. I don't have to wash your feet. That's why we don't wash feet today. We don't have to do it. And uh, so he went into this house to hide, but he couldn't hide. Uh, and uh, then a certain woman, and we call this a Seraphonician woman, uh, found him. She was looking for him. This woman had a, a daughter, a little daughter. I don't know how old the kid, I don't know how old that little kid was. Maybe 
like your age. She had a little daughter. And the daughter was sick. And so she went to Jesus for something. Well, when she walked into the house, uh, Jesus was sitting down at a table and probably the floor had dirt and sand on it, a little dust. He probably kicked some of the dust off of his feet on the floor, you know, out of his shoes. Uh, nobody can tell me it didn't happen. I'm saying that it did happen, and if it didn't happen, it could have happened. All right? And uh, then there was a little puppy under the table, a, a dog. Are you, are you reading this uh, uh, chapter here? I told you Mark chapter 7, starting at the 24th verse. That's where I am. All right? And so there was this little dog under the table. And uh, I hate to say it, but maybe the dog was licking Jesus' feet too. <laughs> you know, puppies like, uh, Jesus was lovable. Everybody loved him, right? Well, not everybody, but. And so what do you think the animals would do? They would love him. And what do dogs do when they love you? They lick you, don't they? Yes. So it's, it's very possible that, uh, remember Lazarus? Lazarus had sores on his leg. You know what sores are? When I was a kid, I had plenty of them. Plenty of them. But the dogs didn't come to lick my sores. But they licked Lazarus' sores. And where was Lazarus? He was around a rich man's table, was he not? So that means the dogs were around the table. Why do you think the dogs would be around the table? Why would dogs be around the table? Huh? Anybody? Why would dogs be around the table? Because somebody's going to throw a little scrap to him. Right? Isn't that what we do? Yeah. No, you use dog food today. <laughs> but in those days, you got the scraps from the table. That's what the dogs got. And they love that. So, consider now you see the dog around the table, mm -hmm. underneath oh. the table. And he's probably wagging his tail and kicking up some of the sand and dust, right? But here's this lady that's come in to see Jesus because, and she reminds me of Hadassah and her mother. I have a very strong imagination. When I went to urgent care, I'll never forget what I saw when I saw Hadassah in her mother's lap. Here's this big girl sitting in her mama's lap. And she's, you know, she's in pain. She's suffering, right? Is that right? Am I speaking the truth? Were you there? Were you in your mother's lap? Say it loud. Yes, yeah, she was in her mother's lap. And her mom was hugging her. I'll never forget that. Never forget that. And uh, I was in pain myself at the time. But here's this, this is what happens in my mind. I start picturing things. I start to imagine things. And that's what I was imagining. So now I'm reading the story, and it's about this lady that goes, you, you, I didn't see Hadassah's daddy. He wasn't there. No, he wasn't there. Mama was there. Mama's always going to be there. Don't you love your mama? Oh, yes, you do, right? Huh? Mama's always there. When you get hurt, wh who do you go to, mama or daddy? You know, go to your mama. <laughs> mama understands. And what does she do when you get hurt? What is, what is something that mama does? I mean, I'm talking about the dog licking Jesus' feet. What, does mamas, what do mamas do when you go to them hurt? They lick you, right? And you feel better. Now, I don't know how that happens, but it does happen. Or she'll go there and kiss you, Amen. right? She'll kiss it, and it feels better, right? Yeah, you've had that experience, haven't you? And so this lady has a daughter, and this daughter is sick. And uh, so... Uh, 
The woman was, uh, she was a Greek, uh, Seraphonician woman. Don't worry about that big word. And she said to Jesus, uh, you're going to help me. I need help. Well, Jesus could have said, oh, time out, time out. I'm taking a break. I don't have time for this right now. Now, we would say, oh, Jesus wouldn't say that now, would he? Maybe he would. Maybe he wouldn't. But in any case, I'm saying that's probably or possibly what he said. And so Jesus said unto her, you want me to heal your daughter? What's wrong with your daughter? My daughter is sick. Jesus, you know that. She's got uh, a devil in her. Something is wrong with her. So now, who's going to help, help this woman if this, this little, little kid has something in, in her? Who, who, who in that day is going to do that? Well, let's take uh, Sister Barbara over there. Now, you don't know this. I know it because I'm up with her at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock. She's been suffering with pain every night. Every night she's been suffering with pain for over two weeks. Every night she can't go to sleep. And I'm on my knees by the bed praying for her while she's in the front trying to get some sleep in pain. So... You may not know what other kids are going through. Your mom may not know what you're going through. The only thing that she has is you start crying. You heard the baby crying back there? What did the mama do? Huh? You can't see that. But now, does he feel much better? And all she did was to hand him something. Huh? How about that? So now this lady tried everything for her daughter, and there was no healing for her. Here we have a mother here with a daughter. This little girl is suffering with some problem she's got. I don't know what it is. I don't know if the mom knows what it is. But who takes care of this little one? Well, it just so happened there's a papa here. So he also helps with, with, with that. But I don't think as much as the mama does. So uh, when she went to Jesus for help, Jesus probably took a scrap from the table and threw it to the dog underneath the table. And listen to what Jesus says. Listen to what Jesus says. Because sometimes we misunderstand what the Bible is saying and what it means. Now listen to what it says. Uh, who, who has that? Verse 27. Listen to this. Oh, she doesn't have it. Nobody has it. Read it. Mark 7, 27. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. Ah, now. It sounds like Jesus said, You are a dog, doesn't it? That's what it sounds like. And maybe some people interpreted that. He looked at her as a dog. But what did I say? I said there was probably dog, a dog underneath the table and Jesus was throwing a little scrap to the dog and he was trying to tell her, should we give something so very precious to someone that isn't worthy of it? You know, doesn't deserve it? Well, I don't know how we talk about the dogs because in America, everybody loves their dogs. They love their pets, right? How many of you have a dog? Who's got a dog? You, have no, you, got, you got a dog? What's his name? Fido, right? <laughs> you have a, I don't know about that. You have a dog? Really? Does she have a dog? No, she doesn't have a dog. Only Americans have dogs, right? Dogs and cats. All right, you got a dog. Oh, she's got a cat. Americans have dogs and cats, huh? See, so, and they take care of those dogs and cats. They make sure they don't get scrapped, right? They get some very expensive food. Their food is more expensive than what, 
you know, you look at a dog, you look at dog food and you want to eat it. Because many times it's more nutritious than what we eat. What do we eat? Tucci roll, right? Milky Way, right? Uh, McDonald's hamburger. And yeah, the dog food is a better treat than a McDonald's hamburger. Well, I better not say that. I, I didn't call McDonald's hamburgers dog food. I didn't say that, all right? <laughs> but I'm saying dog food can be much better because what happens when we eat all of this, I think we call it junk food, but we don't feed our dogs junk food, do we? No, they used to get junk food, but they don't get that now. They used to get the scrap, but they don't get that. They, you pay a lot of money for dog food. So I don't think Jesus was calling this woman a dog. He was talking probably about the dog underneath the table. So he said, I'm not going to give what is precious to the dog. You know, I'm going to give the dog scrap. And so what did the woman say? What did she say? Who, who can tell me what the woman said to Jesus when he said that? Now notice, notice how this is working out. Notice the text of it. What, is, what does she say to Jesus? Anybody's got that? Ah, so now she probably saw him throwing some crumbs to the dog under the table and she saw the dog eating the crumbs off of the floor and she said, yeah, uh, but look at the dog, he's eating the crumbs. I'll eat the crumbs if that's what it takes to get my daughter healed. And he said, you would? Well, yes, and when you feed the dog crumbs, what do they do? Do they go away and never come back? No, oh, they come back for more crumbs, don't they? Because they love that. And they lick your hand and your feet over and over again. That's, a dog is a man's best friend, right? And so that's why I said it was probably Jesus that the dog was around. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that's a fact because I don't know that. But I, I'm giving you the story, right? And... Then Jesus said to this woman, uh, and he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the problem that your daughter had is now solved. Amen. Why? Why was the problem solved? Can anybody tell me why was the problem solved? Why? Why was the problem solved? Someone, tell me, please. Why was the problem solved? Was it Jesus' faith? Why was the problem solved? The problem was solved because of her faith. She was willing to do anything. Are you willing to do anything? If God told you to go dip, dip in Jordan, dip, dip in Jordan seven times, I mean, uh, seven times, would you do that? Well, what did Naaman say? I'm not about to do that. That nasty river? <laughs> no, there are cleaner rivers than that. Well, if you want what I've got, that's what you're going to do. Amen. We have to make a, what we call a consecration. You have to give God something. Yes. When you want something from God, you have to give him something. Right. No, there's no free lunch here. Yes. You have to give him something, right? Yes. And if you, don't, yes. if you think that you're going to get something for nothing, you've got another thought coming. <laughs> you got another thought coming. Yes. So, uh, there we have the story. Mm -hmm. You have the story, and maybe sometime when you're older and you're sick and you don't know what to do, you go 
to doctors like Sister Barbara has and it hasn't worked out, uh, you will remember the story how that this Greek lady went to Jesus and we talked about the dog under the table licking uh, the foot of Jesus and the dust and all of these things underneath that table. And you'll remember the story because of the dog under the table. You're, you know, it'll all come back to you. All of it will come back to you. Now, there's just one other thing that I'm going to say before I say the story is over. Uh, can you understand the story that I just told? Okay, I think we understand the story. Now, before I close with this, and then you can pray, you, you'll be able to pray if you have a physical problem, if you're sick or something like that, I can assure you, I can assure you that God will heal you. Amen. That I can do. Now, I was sick for 12 years. I have had a problem with my prostate for 12 years. And every time I went to a doctor, they would check it, and I said, I didn't ask you to do that. And they'd check and check and check. Every time I went, it's getting worse, it's getting worse, it's getting worse, it's getting worse. And 12 years, and so finally, uh, the 12th year, I told, I said, you know what, Lord? I, I'm going to ask you to work on this thing for me. Work on it. So they don't be talking to me about it anymore. And you remember I told you about, I thought I was going to have to use a diaper? You remember that? That's true. Because I used to have a towel because of the problem. I had to wear a towel because of the problem. You think that's a joke? That's not a joke. That's the truth. But you know what? Three weeks ago, I got up and the problem was gone. I can, I can go to my doctors now and I can tell them the problem is gone. Did I tell you? And I told God, if you don't take it away, I'll die with it. Amen. I don't care what it takes. I'll die with it. Now, I'm not going to do anything. Anytime they told me, do something, I said, I'm not doing anything. Do you understand? And the only reason I went to the hospital for my heart, because I was unconscious. <laughs> but if I had been conscious, I don't think you would have seen me in that hospital. Because when I got in the hospital and I found out I was in the hospital, my family will tell you, what did I do? What did I say? Let me go home. I'm out of here. <laughs> I said, where do you think you're going? My daughter said, where do you think you're going, old man? You can't move. I said, okay, so they had to really tie me down. That's how much I believe God can heal you. Whatever you ask, whatever you ask, and what is it? you go here into Matthew, and you say, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. Constantly ask him, ask him, ask him. Knock, ask, ask. And that's what that lady was doing. She was asking in faith, believing that Jesus would heal her daughter. So when she went home, she found her daughter was healed. And you will find the same thing. When mama says, oh, uh, they, they can't operate on you. Then you can say to mama, well, let's try Jesus. Let's try Jesus. We've got one more physician. That's why we call him the great physician. Luke, Luke, Luke was also a physician, but she didn't go to Luke. She went to Jesus. And that's what I do. I go to Jesus. And I hope you remember this lesson and this story. This is a lesson in the story. And the story is done so that you can remember it. That when you're old, you'll be able to say, well, the doctor said he can't help me anymore. Just remember, Jesus can and will.
My name is Rebecca Ash and welcome to the Apostolic Faith Key West channel. We are a traditional Bible believing church and here you can worship God through music, be encouraged by victorious testimonies and hear practical, relevant Bible based sermons. If you want to be uplifted and inspired then watch any of the videos on our channel. We are located right here in Key West, Florida at 720 Southern Street and you can find our live or the time for our live services right here in the links below. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with a friend. We look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> 